The original Pokemon Snap feels fundamentally unspectacular in 2021. Pokemon spin-off games are ubiquitous and have been for multiple generations and iterations of the franchise. From Mystery Dungeon to Let's Go Pikachu to Pokemon Go to the new Diamond and Pearl remakes and the latest mainline games, Sword and Shield, and even exciting new directions like Legend of Arceus, it's fair to say that while Pokemon has always been an RPG, the franchise has used the aesthetic and stylization on many different game formulas and mechanical systems over the years. Puzzle games, platformers, a freaking MOBA is coming? Pokemon has dipped its toes across most genres in the medium. But back in 1999, Pokemon Snap felt like a revelation. It wasn't quite the leap that Mario 64 felt like and still feels like, but it was a blockbuster for Nintendo nonetheless. An on-rails photography game with somewhat opaque scoring mechanics turns out to be the perfect fit for a nature-style Pokemon game. And while it's hardly the deepest or most mechanically complex game on the N64, it works as an effective advertisement for the graphics and power of the system. Getting to see Pokemon rendered in 3D was such an obviously good idea that Nintendo did it several more times with Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2 and later Gale of Darkness for the GameCube. And as a kid I loved Pokemon. Blue version is still the game I've beaten all the way through beginning to end the most number of individual times now, which is 16. And if you would have asked me in 1999 what I wanted most from Nintendo's new console, it would have been Charizard, Venusaur, and Pikachu in 3D. It's a simple, perfect pitch for a video game and the marketing really stuck the landing. I don't know if they have Costco everywhere. Costco is a warehouse club like Sam Goody's essentially. You get good prices to buy stuff in bulk, everything from clothes to appliances, electronics, basically anything over 20 bucks. Costco used to sell this incredible N64 bundle that came with Pokemon Snap and a clear purple controller, a classic black console with gray controller. It was everything I ever wanted. And I finally got an N64 in 1999 for Christmas and the Pokemon Snap bundle became the first home console I ever owned. I think a big reason I'm so nostalgic about Pokemon Snap in particular is because I associate it with Blockbuster, Toys R Us, FAO Schwartz, and other general 90s brands. It showed up in N64 kiosks in McDonald's and some hotels. It exudes this late 90s, early aughts energy and positivity throughout its simple concept but joyous design, and it feels emblematic of a moment in time that feels harder and harder to relate to through the lens of the modern world. All these things, these kiosks, discs, wires, plastic, it all just is a phone now, and everyone has one. So having all this technology at our fingertips doesn't always feel so special, as flamboyantly celebrated, you might say, as this era was. I mean, look at this. The way we interact with this, everything about this form from physical to a conceptual level has fundamentally changed, and it's not hard to admire how earnest this is. It captures this specific energy, and nobody makes stuff like this anymore. You know, like, not even Nintendo. New Pokemon Snap is being developed by Bandai, and they earned the gig after the moderately successful but fan-favorite Pokken Tournament, which I am a huge, huge fan of. I'm going to talk about Pokken quite a bit in a future video, so stay tuned for that, but... No, it's a bit of an awkward game. It has some unique variables under the hood that make it feel special. It's also my favorite Pokemon art style of the modern era, and I'm a sucker for these spin-off games where they have this one-time use 3D depictions of Pokemon that just feels and looks a little bit different. Compared to the mainline games that reuse canonical assets over and over, especially in recent iterations to some fan discord, Pokemon feels singular and so, so cool. And all this to say, I'm very excited by new Pokemon Snap. And the franchise feeling a little tired lately, the prospect of a nature-style documentary with Pokemon as a photography game with quality visual assets sounds like just the breath of fresh air the franchise needs right now. No battling, no combat, no violence, just chilling in nature with pretend creatures. And I don't think I'm alone when I say I believe that the future of the franchise lies in branching out beyond the formula that has gotten here. There will always be appeal in the simple four moves elemental based RPG mechanics, but what makes Pokemon, Pokemon, is Pokemon. And on some level, battling, fighting with Pokemon specifically, is a very narrow set of interactions with these creatures. And I don't mean for this to be some kind of politically correct, overactive, Pokemon is animal cruelty thing. I'm an adult and I understand that it's ultimately just children's fiction to sell toys. But I think about the Pokemon movies, both the animated and the live action feature Detective Pikachu, as well as the Mewtwo specific original, which I'm blanking on. But a surprising amount of Pokemon story beats revolve around treating Pokemon battling as essentially animal fighting than it's supposed to be. 
And there's this whole underground fighting ring in Detective Pikachu, and while it's obviously played up for the cool factor as Pokemon Stadium realized on the big screen, on some level it's communicated thematically uh, that fighting, specifically Pokemon fighting each other, is bad. I pitted them against each other, but not until they set aside their differences did I see the true power they all shared deep inside. I see now that the circumstances of one's birth are irrelevant. It is what you do with the gift of life that determines who you are. So how do you celebrate Pokemon without violence? What role do they play in a game world with players? Pokemon Snap is a great start. Obviously, photography is not the most gripping game pitch on the market today, but it's a nice wide entry point. I love Pokemon Snap, and I think it's a game my mom and dad could play, as well as my friend's children. There's a simplicity and an elegance to not just the point and shoot gameplay, but the celebration of Pokemon as animals that appeals to any age. And to be clear, I hardly think photography is the only way to express some of this potential. Heck, Snap is an on-rails game. Take it off the rails, go for something more akin to a true Pokemon Safari simulator, something greater than what's attempted at Sword and Shield, that could be powerful. Maybe Arceus? Maybe something else entirely? We don't know yet. What I do know is that I like the way Pokemon Snap really celebrates its Pokemon like wild animals through animation and character design, and it's something I really, really wish that Game Freak in particular seemed interested in doing more of. And I don't know about you, but after more of this year isolated and indoors, here in the last month before things get back to normal, something as chill and as laid back as going for the new Pokemon Snap seems like just the vibe for me. The proper way to close out what has otherwise been a pretty strange era. Video games got me through the pandemic, a once in a generation plague, and in some ways it's fitting that a sequel to a game I loved 20 years ago gets to usher me into the next era.